You're watching Tang Tools Muscle Garage, the home of New Zealand's toughest muscle cars, hot rods and street machines. Muscle Garage is proudly brought to you by Teng Tools in association with Mount Shop, Meguiar's and Nidakar. Coming up, we hit the bright lights of Harwara for Taranaki Holden Club's General Motors family reunion and we shed raid Colin and Kerry's collection of cool and nahina puri. But it's the crew from Meguiar's kicking us off. This week, we're in Auckland, checking out Matt's 2011 Challenger an old school meets new approach to the muscle car and one that was supposed to be a Camaro. I didn't really look into it too much until it arrived. I realised when I popped the bonnet on the Camaros, the motor sits back sort of like halfway well, under the front windshield. So I wouldn't have been able to put my blower or, unless I cut the window out or move the motor forward or did a whole lot of strange stuff which wasn't practical. So that sort of burst that bubble and it gave me a good excuse to save a bit more. I uh, saw a Dodge Challenger for sale and straight away I just said, wow, I want that Challenger. It was the right colour, it was the right shape, it was just, it just fitted, ticked all the boxes, manual, everything. So that's where it started. While the canvas might have changed, the plan was still the same. Matt's no stranger to hot rodding modern metal. The Eat You For Tea plates are ones you might recognise from his tubbed and blown VU Holden Ute. That vehicle sliced and diced with just delivery Ks on the clock. The Challenger had a lot to live up to. Everyone goes, why more? Well, why not more? I've got more space, put more things. Do something different. When you actually say, look, I want this, okay, how are we going to make it? How are we going to make it fit? It's not supposed to, what are we going to do to, to rectify that? And that's part of the fun, I think, with cars. That's why a lot of Kiwis like cars, because we like thinking outside the box and doing things that people say you can't do. It's always a good challenge. It's fair to call this Dodge outside the box. The modern muscle crate motor, a Gen 3 392 Hemi, supports a 671 supercharger fed by Fitec EFI dual quad throttle bodies. Further plumbing was required for both the water methanol injection setup and 250 horses worth of nitrous oxide for those special occasions. Getting power to the treads is the task of a Tremec 6 speed and Wavetrack LSD. Just in case the iron lung out the hood wasn't old school enough, Matt has gone to the trouble of making the rest of the setup look the business too, right down to the twin plug Apache heads with custom valve covers and leads. Yep, a Gen 3 Hemi would usually have coil packs and no plug wires at all. But all that's a lot of stuff that was never meant to fit between the rails of a 2011 Challenger chassis. You've got to be persistent. Persistent. This is not a one-shot job, this one. It's, it's like anything. It's, when, you, when you build something, you dry fit it first, you make it how you want it and make sure everything runs, make sure everything works. Then you pull it apart again. And then you start putting it back together in the final form. So you think. And then you're watching TV and you see something, oh, that's a good idea. Or someone else makes a comment and you start thinking about it. In the middle of the night, you sit up and go, oh, why did I have to hear that? And away you go back to the drawing board again. But the real story of this challenging challenger would be overcoming more than a fair share of headaches. We only discovered that the problems we had is when had everything all done on it, wired up, and the computer was ready. And I went to lower the motor because all the, all the parts arrived for the gearbox and the, and the dull plate clutch and everything. We were lowering the motor in, and I just couldn't get this thing to marry up to the gearbox. And I said, what's going on? You know, and that's where we discovered that my car was the oddball year where they had different spline on the clutch. And then I started realising, oh, this is not actually going together as smoothly as I thought. Unfortunately for Matt, that was just a taste of things to come, as he came to grips with the dialect of the modern vehicle, electronics. And it was then I started to realise this is starting to get a bit serious and the panic mode set in. So what, you know, it's too late to back out. The motor's in the hole. The clutch is about to arrive, the gearbox is sitting there, the rest of the car's done, the roll cage is in, the tank's in, the fuel's in the tank waiting to go and this computer does not, want, does not like my engine. Calls to Chrysler experts both locally and stateside would offer little assistance, leaving Matt with no other option than trial and error. 
and there were a few of those errors before finally a fast XIM ignition control module would solve most of the problems. Note the most part. Started it up, oh, it was the happiest day of my life when this thing cracked into life. Second or third crank, it was away. I thought, this is wonderful. Until I went to move it from here, out the door there. And then I realized something's not right here because uh, I couldn't turn the steering. It was like, like concrete block, it was Armstrong steering. It was like, what's going on here? The power steering's not working. Once it had started, the other computer took over. It thought it had stalled. So it just said, well, since you're stalled, you don't need your power steering and you don't need your alternator. And that's when the nightmare started. Oh no, what am I gonna do? What have I done? And there was big panic. It was a couple of weeks of like the project just stopped. It was, I don't know what to do. As our more astute viewers will have noted, this vehicle is clearly now driving. And that's only down to the fine art of deception with dummy coil packs and dummy variable cam timing valves installed to trick the stock cam phaser and factory brain. That means there are now four computers working together to run the Challenger. It's the stuff of nightmares for your old school hot rodder, but the result is finally the realization of the car in Matt's head for all those years. Sure, you can get more power, I suppose, if you put something under the bonnet and hide everything with modern technology. But you don't get a, like a Hot Wheels looking car or, you know, that, that's just, you know, well, we're all big kids, aren't we, in the end of the day. I suppose you can say it's a handful. It's one of those cars, you, you, it's not like an easy drive. It's not like, okay, I've got an auto, put it in D and just lean back and away you go. No, it's not like that. You know you're driving it, and, but that's part of it, you know. It, you enjoy the drive because it's, it's like a, when you're on a, if you're in a race car on the track, that's not a pleasurable drive, but it's a fun drive. So that's what it's all about, I suppose. I suppose it's fun more than, you know you're driving a car. Right, shed rating time. Thanks to our mates at Mount Shop, we're in Nahanapuri checking out Colin and Kerry's collection of cool old stuff. Well, tastes and cars are, uh, I would say they're pretty simple. I only buy what I like. If I don't like it, I don't buy it. Once we've got them, we don't sell them. We keep them. We buy them, we keep them, we'll have them until the day that we pass them on to either family or whatever. And I don't have a particular preference for brand because I've got GM, Ford and now Mopar, plus my old Whippet which falls into somewhere. You just buy what you like because they're cool and that's my impression of cool, not anybody else's. If people don't like what I've got, it doesn't matter, does it, you know? You only buy what you want, so uh, yeah. But it's clear to see Colin and Kerry's version of cool has a bit of a theme going on. I like cars that look reasonably standard. I'm not a bullet man, don't like bullet at all. Electronic speedos, that sort of thing, no, that's a no-goer. Steel wheels are fine, hubcaps, not a problem. I don't mind mags, as long as they're of the old school variety. I don't mind cars that are low, because obviously a stock car, even if it isn't, got big 22-inch mags in that, as long as they're lowered a little bit, look pretty cool. Airbags, that sort of thing, fine, but I still like the stock look visually from the outside and internally. Uh, when you look on the inside, I like to keep my cars pretty much as they were from the factory. And the cars aren't the only nod to the way things were. While being aged and weathered is a big part of the appeal for much of the contents of this shed, there's one big gleaming 57 Buick shaped exception. It did go bang. I never actually did find out why it went bang. The engine went, but it didn't move. So whether it be transmission or diff, but either way, that was the beginning. So uh, pretty much I shot it into town, had it full barred, got the engine rebuilt, the original motor, it's matching numbers. It came home again. I lifted the body off, big mistake. And at that stage, I knew I was kind of gone down the wrong road, a road that probably a lot of people have gone down. Once you start, you can't stop. So my talents at that stage couldn't do the body work. So into town it went, went to Jonesy's, been there about six years, and the result is stunning. I'm super impressed with what they've done. The car's just beautiful. We, they took me into airbagging it and so on. And I haven't even been for a drive down the road in it yet. So compliance in a few weeks, and then we'll be right. The Pattersons have clearly found other stuff to go on with in the Buick's absence. Kerry's Mercury was a trade-me find. 
Colin dropped a 390 and C6 in front of the factory diff to get it back on the road before the addition of an interior to match the character of that wax-protected exterior. Crocodile skin. A couple of coupes have taken up residence too. The 37 Plymouth is set to be married up to Jag front and rear ends, while the matching 38 is actually a Dodge. A real deal barn find this one, proudly wearing that all-important barn find dust. Well, what didn't blow off on the trailer ride home anyway? And this, well, that'd be a 28 Whippet. I've had it for over 30 years. When I finally decided to get out of the vintage cars and move on, I decided I'd sell it. But I couldn't get what I wanted for it, and I didn't want a lot for it. Sat in the shed for a while, and then one night I, I thought, right, that's it. And I made the made mistake of uh, pulling it all apart, chopping the chassis, dropping a big V8 into it, putting a diff in it, made my own bell housing, fitted a manual up behind it and so on, and I was, I was getting into it, man, I was going to do this. And until I found out that I'd probably never get it back on the road, and I should have got it on the road while it was almost restored. So I canned that idea, and we've parked it in the corner. Seems I've owned it so long, it can just sit there. So one day I'll probably turn that into a dirt tracker, put a roll cage in it, and if we can get through tech and so on, we'll probably run it up as the drags, you know, just as a uh, good fun club car. And while a newly road legal Buick will make a pretty good distraction from the projects this summer, there'll be plenty waiting patiently here for their turn. And you can bet when they do roll out the door, there'll be Colin's version of cool. It's an awesome hobby. For me, to be able to come home, have your dinner, and come down the shed. It's a great thing, you know, it, it, it's part of your passion. It keeps you occupied, keeps you thinking about what you want to do, what you're trying to achieve, what your next move's going to be on the car, what the next car might be. I've been a long time without my Buick, and I've really missed that. So, you know, having to be able to work on Kerry's car and get that one up and running, and then acquiring the Plymouth, and I've already started on that car, doesn't have to be super fast, but I just want a nice little club car on standard rims, maybe widened slightly, hubcaps. But once again, the cool standard look, yeah. Amazing results, even at full sight. You're back with Teng Tools Muscle Garage, proudly brought to you by Teng Tools, in association with Mount Shop, Meguiar's and Nidakar. Okay, thanks to Nidakar, we're making our way to Hawara to check out Taranaki Holding Club's inaugural General Motors family reunion. General Motors closed their plants in Australia last year on the 20th of October. So we thought we'd coincide the show with the closing of the plant as well as we'd incorporate the rest of the world brands of General Motors being a major company within the world. So we thought that um, we'd put on this show and try to attract as many makes and models 
regardless of their condition, it's not actually a chrome show. It's a show that um, just portrays every make and model. There's such a wide range of cars and there's models that people don't even know of. The Labour Weekend Show made Harvard's TSB hub its home for the day and did an admirable job of filling it up too. Even the preferential GM parking outside, an impressive sight. And with the hosts of Holden Club, the Aussie Generals were well represented. But opening up the scope a bit wider made for some interesting inclusions amongst the ranks. Well, generally we have a biannual Holden Show. But this year was our biannual Holden Show. But because we've been awarded the New Zealand Nationals for the Holden Federation next year, and where we have the creme to the creme of Holdens on display for the, for the first time in Taranaki, I might add. We thought we couldn't have Holden, Holden, Holden every year, so it gets rather boring for the public. So we thought we'd incorporate this into a GM show, try it. If it works successfully, we'll be back. But it was a Holden that first grabbed our attention, a rare one at that. A 1954 Holden FJ, it is running the original 132 cubic inch old grey motor, only about 26 horsepower, so they aren't so they aren't very powerful, but they have got extremely high torque, unbelievable motor. I purchased the vehicle in 2002. It was borderline whether I did destroy it or not. The uh, holes in it were quite huge. You could actually poke your head right through and look on the other side. My son-in-law said to me, Dave, they don't make FJ Utes anymore. You can't go down to the shop and buy one. It's worth restoring it. Surprisingly, you can buy pretty much anything you want for this vehicle. I had an awesome panel meter, an old school gentleman in the 70s. If you can get an old school panel meter, it makes life very easy. You're driving down the road and people just give you the thumbs up and, and the amount of pleasure that I get of driving this vehicle is just amazing. And at the other extreme end of the scale. It's a 2008 um, HSV GDS. It already had a cam and stuff, and it had a VCM cam, it had walk and shore exhaust, it had walk and shore short shifter, but within a month or two I'd ripped all that stuff out, soldered on trade me and whatnot. Started with exhaust, uh, put big DeFlippo headers on it, thought, well, it needs a, needs a blower on it, so I go to Eastern Automotive to put a blower on it, and then I sort of drove it around for about a year, and then sort of not quite happy with the, you know, needed a bit more scream, so I um, put, took it off the road and then it just went to a whole another level. I just thought, oh, I'll just put suspension on it, I'll get some new wheels on it, I'll lower it, I'll um, just bling up a few things here and there. And while it was off the road, it was just like, you know, in the shed and all in bits and pieces. Oh, while it's in pieces, I might as well do that to it and that to it and that to it. So it just extended from one thing to another, just grew arms and legs. I've always wanted a big bug catcher hanging out of the hood, but I wanted something um, not generic. I wanted something a bit more evil, so something out of like Alien versus Predator. I had it at seven pound to start with. I don't know, being a young man, full testosterone and that, you just, <laughs> you want more, eh? you get used to it. So I upped it up to 18 PSI, and we had big issues. Drive shaft started um, whipping, and fuel pump couldn't uh, keep up with it. The map sensor couldn't keep up with it. I backed it off to 11 pound, it's a little bit safer. Yeah, it's running 410 kilowatts at the wheels, and um, it's running fine, yeah. The popularity of late model Holdens and HSVs means there's an impressive aftermarket catalogue at your disposal. Bergen, however, decided to ignore all that completely. I'm a stainless steel fabricator anyway, so I've got the old man's workshop and all the gears and everything all at my fingertips. And I just love detail, just love real small, finicky little stuff. Gauge cluster in the, in the cab there, that's about four or five hundred hours. Same with the bug catcher as well, there's six, seven hundred hours in there. It's actually weird, I've never liked Holdens, I've never liked Fords, I've always been a real jack man, I've been to a Rotaries and all that, but I've always loved V8s, and I've always loved big throbbing, big cammed, supercharged V8s, got that wine, got the big throb, started building something, something different, you know, something that no, you, you haven't really seen out there, something unique. Doing more than his fair share for a GM theme show was Terry Christensen and his caddy powered Chev, complete with Pontiac Trans. Um, we didn't go looking for it, actually what happened was I got some mates in the States and um, they found it at an ex-hot rod shop shop car. We bid it on it and yeah, we won and before I knew it, it was back here and yeah, I got in a fair bit of trouble for it actually. It's a 1960 Brockwood, which is a factory two-door. They're uh, quite rare, I think there's about 1,200 of them made. We've tried to make it into the 70s, 60s style with the lace, as you can see. We've done a 514 cubic inch Cadillac motor, it's full of um, 
aftermarket MTS parts. It's quite quite involved in the engine. It's got a Pontiac 400 trans, got a Curry 9 inch diff, four wheel disc brakes on Hydro Boost. So it's quite quite up there on horsepower and, and running gear. The whole point at the start was to replace a toy from my drag car days to, to this. Hasn't quite worked like that, but what it's turned into is a cool, cool cruiser. Um, we set it up so the whole family could drive it, e.g. why the injection's on it, um, but still trying to keep the old school look. And while it's a rare car to begin with, the Big Chev's value to Terry goes far deeper than a dollar figure. Before the show, um, I was putting the engine into it about three months ago and had a heart attack and had to go and get a triple bypass and unknown to me, some of my mates from Taranaki here come and grabbed it and finished it and hence why it's here now. It's more of a family member than a vehicle to be honest. Pretty much brought all of us hot riding guys together because of what happened to me through a hunk of metal. We call them the um, Gingervale Village people and a huge thanks to them because I wouldn't have been here and I'm lucky to be here myself to be honest. The Taranaki Holden Club will soon be back at it hosting the Holden Nationals in 2019. But given the success of this, the first General Motors family reunion, we'd bet number two isn't far behind. It's your last chance to get yourself in the draw for our weekly Tang Tools and Maguire's gift pack worth 250 bucks. Simply head to themotorhood.com and hit the Tang Tools Muscle Garage link. This is the final in the series, so it's also your last chance to get your name in for the big one. The massive Tang Tools 622-piece automotive toolkit and workstation, a complete Meguiar's car care pack, and a $500 mount shop voucher. The total value is nearly six grand. Don't miss out. Tang Tools Muscle Garage was proudly brought to you by Tang Tools. Get organized. Mount shop, undercar specialists. Meguiar's, people who love cars, love Meguiar's. And Need a Car, the easy way to research and buy cars online.